Hi everyone, my name is Laura. I am here today to share my daughter's Emma story as a KAT6B variant. Our story actually begins in Chile, where I grew up with my mom and dad and four sisters and brothers. As many of you, I grew up um, watching the Disney movies. Um, that sweet, happy ending um, that led my life to come to the other side of the world, looking for to finish my studies in architecture and to find that sweet, happy ending. I came to this amazing country almost 10 years ago. And only two years later, I found the man who will become my husband and Emma's dad. I thought to myself, this is my happy ending, especially because we felt pregnant, which I was even sometimes told that I could not have kids. However, that dream came became quickly a nightmare because I was diagnosed with polydramnius, which is um, too much amniotic fluid. Emma was born on the 6th of March 2014 in Canberra, the capital of Australia. She was 48 centimetres and 2.8 kilograms. Emma had to be pulled out with forceps. She was floppy, she was not breathing, and she had to be um, carried straight away to the ICU. I didn't actually saw her until two days later where I could um, get up and see her in the ICU because of my surgery. I got to go home three days later, but Emma had to stay, which made me feel like I had abandoned her in some way. It felt like I wasn't even a mom. I had a child, but I got to go home without my child. For the following two weeks, I had to pump milk and take it to hospital to attempt to feed Emma. Finally, after those two weeks, Emma got to go home. She was still not drinking that much uh, milk and she had a lot of issues and features uh, which led the pediatrician to think that Emma had a genetic condition. However, in Canberra, they didn't have the specialist that Emma needed. So at six months, we made a decision to move to Melbourne so we could access the Royal Children's Hospital as well as Monash Genetics. After a year and a half, um, genetics um, team in Monash tested the KAT6B variant and it was successfully diagnosed as auto syndrome. However, the name didn't actually told us any information. We had a diagnosis, but the information there was next to nothing. Emma spent a lot of time in hospital uh, due to chest infections, um, lack of um, uh, milk, and she was constantly dehydrated. Um, she, her colds, it, like, in a normal child 
would last a week and a half, but in MS case, they quickly become these pneumonias that could not let her breathe, affected her heart and all these things. We spend New Year's at hospital, birthday parties at hospital. We meet so many of our friends that we were trying to make at the time. Um, it was a constant no answer because Emma was constantly sick. Emma's first years consisted um, in a lot of surgeries. Um, first one being grommets to heal her, um, to hear uh, a little bit better. At two and a half years old, she got her adenoids and tonsils removed to help her breathe and swallow. At around three and a half years old, because of Emma's constant um, pneumonias, he got decided that she was um, aspirating her milk. And this is what it caused her, um, the pneumonias, more than the actual colds. So it was decided to put the peg. Around the same time, um, we got a bronchoscopy uh, to see if we could find any information in her lungs to tell us how to treat her better and um, she started the Botox injections in her salival glands to, to be able to reduce the saliva that she was constantly um, secreting. At around four years old, um, Emma started school or kinder, which um, helped her copy her peers in their eating and felt more comfortable around food. Therefore, at four and a half years old, um, the peg got removed. At around four years old, um, she got a second bronchoscopy to help her clear her lungs of all the residual mucus um, that was left from the many, many um, pneumonias in the past. Uh, because of Emma's low muscle tone, she could not bring that up on her own. At around uh, seven years old, um, Emma had a bad fall from stairs, which caused her knee to be dislocated. So they had, they had surgery for her patella to be relocated and they decided to do her toes as well because she had curly toes in both feet. Emma gets regular annual blood test uh, to test for her thyroid, iron, and all her vitamins. Uh, Emma has attended a dietitian, speech pathology, OT, physio, cardio, and eye doctors since birth. We have had sleep studies, neurology testing, swallowing test, and halt and monitor every six months to see her um, heart development. As I said, um, even though we had a diagnosis, the information provided to us was next to nothing. So most of the support that I got, it was from around the world. First point was the UK, then Sydney, then the United States, and finally South America. Those were my main points of reference. Um, questions to parents, questions of what their experience had been, that even though our children are have the same condition, they are all unique, they are all different, and they are their own person, and they do, and they will do their things at their own time. That is something that I learned in our journey. As many of you, I not only became a mother, but also a therapist, a doctor, a nurse, and an expert on Emma. One of those contacts 
Um, sent me a book when it, she saw Emma on Facebook wearing the, her eye patch um, to correct her lazy eye. This was the first time I saw Emma making a real connection with her book, making that relationship with what she was reading and what, what I was reading and showing her in the photos, in the pictures, that her eye was the same. So she was able to, to see a different story, to see her story, to be able to be part of the actual uh, book, which gave me the idea of creating a book for her, creating a story for her that will not only show her as the hero, but show her that life is so much more than a happy ending. Emma's life gave a 180 degree flip when around four years old, when Emma started kinder, to so for me to be able to finish my studies she swallowed a rock at kinder where she had to be hurry up to emergency and finally have surgery to have the rock um, taken off even though this was the most scariest time of my life um, we met a paramedic in the ambulance that transferred us from the kinder to the Monash children's. And this guy told us about this amazing school called Nepean. This school wasn't just a school, it was a place where she was going to be safe. There was nurses on site, a clinic with pediatricians, and all the therapies were on site. So six months later, Emma started school at Nepean. Emma um, started walking at around two years old with the help of a friend. Um, even though her milestones um, we're looking a little bit different for what we expect. Um, she still did it. She did her own thing. She did it at her own time. And she was very, very brave. She was very happy and she was always showing something new. She started eating or attempting to eat at around one and a half years old. When she started school, communication finally came through and even though her communication didn't look like the other communication of the normal um, expectancy, she was able to communicate what she wanted, what she felt like and that's one of her biggest goals. Emma has learned sign language and uh, she's able to count to five. She has developed her fine motor skills. She's able to do lines and circles and all these <laughs> amazing things with painting. Today, seven and a half years later, Emma has no real health issues. She has overcome everything life has shown and throw at her. She is my most beautiful hero. Even though her life has not been easy, she has never been able to be stopped to smile. She has kept fighting 
every step of the way. Because of Emma, I created a book dedicated to all children with disabilities. And it's called A Very Special Gift. It is time for children's book to celebrate our differences, our uniqueness, and all kinds of abilities, to give them the opportunity to be free, to have any kind of ability, lifestyle, without being ashamed or judged. More importantly, the book shows a disability not only as a villain, but also as a hero, as a promise to all kids that disabilities, they don't have an ending story. They don't, life is not ever an ending story. They, we just need to keep going and something eventually will change. And as parents, we will be there to celebrate with fireworks inside. Thank you so much for listening. This is a little bit of Emma's likes and life and all her happiness and all her smiles that fills my heart every day. And I'm sure your kids do the same for you. They are the gift and they have shown us so much. They have done so much in so little time and they have overcome everything and I would just like to celebrate that they are all unique and even though they have the same diagnosis they will do things on her own time and it's our job to just accept them and love them and be their guide and they are just the angels that have come to our lives thank you so much <laughs>